This call is being recorded. And then um, uh, I've got a few questions and then I'll run out. So we will just, uh, oh, <laughs> before before I get started. So I was going to ask you a little bit about the hero and um, uh, and then a little bit about your podcasting where you do riffs on stories that okay. you talked about, because I haven't listened to that. So I'd love to know about that. <laughs> But um, uh, is there anything that you would like to talk about? Like, like uh, you know, you would you would like me to ask you about before I before I get started? Um, I'd say whatever feels organic to you. So, okay, no no problem. So I'm writing down process because process. <laughs> I, I love talking about process. Truly, it's one it's one of my favorite. Great, things. awesome. So okay, all right. Just imagine there is music, music, music. Hello and welcome to Castle Talk. Oh, by the way, we will not use the video. So uh, so yeah, you can sounds... get up and paste around the room if you like. All right. <laughs> so let's do take two. Hello and welcome to Castle Talk, where we talk to writers and creators of today's genre worlds. I'm your host, Jason Henderson, publisher at Castle Bridge Media, home of the Castle of Horror anthology series. Tonight, we're chatting with USA Today bestselling author Carter Wilson about his new book releasing April 2nd, The Father She Went to Find from Poison Pen Press. Carter Wilson is a USA Today bestselling author of eight critically acclaimed standalone psychological thrillers. I find it fascinating that they're standalone, um, that, that you're not into the, so far, the series thing. <laughs> He's an ITW Thriller Award finalist, a five-time winner of the Colorado Book Award. His works have been optioned for TV and film. He lives outside Boulder, which is groovy, because I live outside of, I live in in Littleton myself. Oh. Uh, dynamic and compelling, he now hosts his own podcast. So he's a competitor, a direct competitor. Um, where he will often uh, riff an original story live. So, welcome, Carter. Jason, great to be here. And uh, of course, we're not competitors. Nobody competes in the podcast world. It's all, <laughs> there's, all there's, entertainment for everybody. There's no pie. Like, there's no... There's, there's no pie. There's, there's no slice. There's no pie. Um, the book, uh, The Father She Went to Find, is a thriller uh, about a woman with... A um, tell me, she has two brain powers. Basically, she is a she has a uh, an eidetic memory and also something else. And tell me what that was. I can't remember. Oh, now you're going to put me on the spot because it's a very long formal word. Um, it, well, you, you don't have to give me the the specific word, but one's a photographic memory. But there's also a uh, there's a de there's a there's there's a sort of a, spe a specificity of detail that's that's unusual. Yeah, she's got a few other traits that came with her acquired savant syndrome and the photographic memory, like you mentioned, being one of them. Uh, but she has a couple really strange quirks. She sees numbers as colors, for example. Mm -hmm. So if you said the number three, she would see it as a certain shade of blue. Um, she and she can draw with almost a photorealistic ability, even though she doesn't really know how she can do it. Um, she literally sees dots appear on a page and she kind yeah, of like just, a dot matrix printer, basically. Right. That, that exactly. She's exactly. She basically in. just connects the dots. Um, so she's got a, a few few skills, but she's not really sure what good they are. <laughs> right. Well, uh, so. So when you and and what this story is about, by the way, is this this young lady. She's 21 years old. It's her birthday, and uh, she decides that she wants to go. She wants to break out of the school that she's been raised in. Break out's a strong word. She's kind of just up and leave, and she wants to go look for the father that she's convinced is waiting for her in California, though she's not sure where. And uh, so, and it's a thriller because it's a road. It's a road movie, a road story that where she's being pursued and she's trying to figure things out. And one of the problems, of course, is that she is, um, in a sense, very childlike. And so uh, uh, talk to me a little bit about creating this character. Like, first of all, um, how did you come up with I want to do this character who has like these these particular talents like how did you settle on this character well it's an interesting question jason because almost and i don't outline so i never know what my stories are about and usually i just think of an opening scene i see the scene perfectly and i write the scene even though i don't know who these people are or why they're doing what they're doing and i take it from there in the case of the father she went to find i saw penny i saw this character she was in my head for about six months before i started writing anything down and i just kind of thought this is a really strange person. I don't know anything about her, but if she's still in my brain after six months, maybe I'll figure out who she is. Um, and all I knew is that she was 21 years old um, and she was a savant. She had become a savant through physical trauma when she was mm. six. And I knew that her father had left her. Uh, and I knew that the year was 1987. 
that was Why all is I it knew. Why the 80s? Like, is there a meaning to it being the 80s, or is it just you felt like writing a story take place in the 80s? I mean, I think if you talk to enough authors, then they start talking to you about their pandemic book, um, which this was my <laughs> pandemic book. You will find a lot of people just wanted to write a time when they were happy, a time, you know, so I was 17 years old in 1987. So I just wanted to escape in time. Uh, so I wrote about 1987. And then of course you start writing about the eighties and you're like, Oh, this was a pretty, pretty horrid decade as well. <laughs> yeah. Like there's no, there, there are no good old days and you start unpeeling the layers when you start digging into it, but it started with that sense of nostalgia. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I totally buy that because in, you know, in theory, there's nothing, it doesn't have to be in the eighties, but there's nothing, you know, it's, it, it, it's so, it's such a strange question. I now kind of regret it because I'm like, you can put it in the eighties if you want to, you can put it in the fifties if you want it. Well, there's something really cool. Also, when you start to realize, if you're a thriller writer, when you realize like, oh, there are no phones, there is no right. lifeline, there's no GPS that that's a great lack of tools that, that, that helps yes. when you're trying to build suspense. Well, especially, yeah, uh, she relies a great deal, or rather, she kind of gets lucky based on the reality of nobody can track you and, you know, uh, unless she stops and calls from a payphone somewhere. I mean, right. there's, there's right. uh, if you think of like Three Days of the Condor, where <laughs> where they're, they're tracking Robert Redford only when he wants to be because they're you know, everything's right. phone lines. And the that's technology's it. not there. And, yeah. and you're right. She is a little she is a little childlike and that's kind of what compelled me about her was that I love the idea that she's one of the smartest people in the world, but like how, how, what the, what good does that do you when you get out into the real world, which she's never done before. And I just kind of like to see like, now what are you going to do? How are those yeah. smarts going to help you now? That really excited me to write about. So if you don't outline, you know, it's the pandemic. You sit down, you, you, go, you go, I think I can do a thriller with this character who has this incredible memory such that she's valuable to people. And, she, and one day the pretender runs away and, you know, you, you decide that you're going to do that, but you don't know where you're going. So I have two questions out of that. One, mm -hmm. do you deliberately try to go, okay, I need to have a twist now. Like I need to, I need thing, something surprising to happen. And so you're just ping ponging between surprises or are you subconsciously or or at least without writing it down are you still going along a uh, you know an aristotelian three act structure like like how is it actually working yeah neither of those really i mean i don't think about structure <laughs> at all because if i started thinking about that it would it would confound me um i literally <laughs> just say you know write a scene i'm like then what happens uh, yeah. and the whole time i'm thinking like well you know, I think a lot of things happen and I think a lot of them aren't very good. Um, mm -hmm. I think she's going to run into a lot of conflict and what would that realistically look like? But I'm never really thinking about like, now I need a twist. You know, you hope your subconscious is working such that 80% of the way in, you're like, oh, what if this happened? Right. Um, and so right. then it surprises me and then hopefully it surprises the reader. Um, but I think, you know, it has to be go through that organic process. And you know, the, the reality is you make tons of mistakes. Um, yeah. you finish your draft, you're like, there's a lot of editing that needs to be done with this. Um, and this one in particular took a lot of reworking. Uh, oh, one really? of the things I, I struggled with is I normally write from a first person present tense point of view. I love mm -hmm. to be inside the character. Um, and I just second guess myself. I'm like, I don't know if I can get close enough to this person. Cause she's so different than me. Yeah. So I wrote the whole thing, third person past tense. And then mm. after getting feedback from my editor, I realized that was a mistake. And I rewrote the entire book. Rewrote the entire book. Present. Yeah. And it was, it was an exercise in humility. It took me about four months because it's literally, you might as well just start with a blank page again. Um, yeah. Because it's not just changing, you know, the tense, the voice completely changes what, when you do that. So it was a good lesson for me. First person present tense. So I've done only one of those. And, uh, it's, it is so funny. I, I, one of the things that, that I found interesting about it was that it slows the whole world down. Like the whole yeah. universe slows down in first person present tense, right? Because suddenly you're going to recite, you're going to explain sights and sounds and textures and stuff that normally you wouldn't actually stop for right. in a, like a James, in a third person, James Bond novel or something like that. Right. It, right. There's an immediacy there that there is. That, and it's you know, chaotic. 
And yeah, <laughs> but I, I, I think point of view is synonymous with finding your voice. I mean, mm. I, my first four books were third person past tense. And when I started writing first person present, I'm like, oh, this is my voice. This is what comes mm. naturally to me. You know, I think I've got enough empathy where I can embody the character and it was just easier. And so I, I really think it is synonymous with finding your voice. Wow. No, I, I, I really enjoy it. And, and it's fun to read. I mean, uh, you know, that's the other thing. People like to read it. I, I, I have no idea. I, there are some people who don't really dig first person present, but, but yeah. I, but there are so many popular writers. Using you you, you got to do it well too. Like if it's not done well, then it really stands out. I can't even imagine. I mean, I believe you. I don't know what that would look like, like bad first person present. I haven't had the misfortune of reading it, but, uh, yeah. but I, I kind of know where you're coming from. All right. So tell me about this. You've got a podcast, it says in your bio, where you have, uh, you will riff an original story live. What does that mean? So the, the podcast, and just to back up a little bit, the podcast was born out of just, I like, like you, I enjoy talking to other writers, um, yeah. but rather than talking about a specific book, I wanted to talk about their journey as a writer. Mm. So really what was their origin story and what were the highs and lows of their publishing career? So, you know, it's 45 minutes, an hour long, something like that. But at the end, we pick a random book from my bookshelves. Um, I have the guests pick a random page and I choose a sentence and I read that sentence out loud. And then that's the first sentence and maybe a two or three minute long short story. So I'll, I'll read that sentence. Oh. They give me a, the next couple of sentences of what happens next. And it, so it's improv, basically. Yeah. So we're you're accepting the other person's premise. So even you might have something in mind and they throw a wrench in it. You have yeah. to go along with it. And it's it's amazing. It's scary every time, but it's fun every time as well. That sounds that sounds really really cool. Do you think that um, I mean, have you found uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? A community of writers is that a difficult thing for a writer to find? Because it's such a solo endeavor. So yeah. like you know, how do you find your tribe? It's not hard to find, but a lot of readers don't seek that out, and that's a mistake because it is a solo endeavor. But community and networking is just as important to a writer as it is to a person in any other profession. So you mm -hmm. seek out those critique groups, alpha and beta readers, um, conferences, organizations, um, and you surround yourself with people who know what you know. And you yeah. start to, then you don't feel so alone. You, then you realize like, oh, this person had 75 rejections before they found an agent too. I'm not alone. In that. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, it's critical. And you just create friendships over time. And my podcast has been a great networking opportunity for me, as I'm sure it is for you. Oh, I've gotten to meet so many writers. I mean, honestly, and I've wound up working with some of them, you know? Yeah, it, totally. Like, so, you know, like I'll be editing an anthology and, and I go, well, that person was interesting, you know? So it's, it, it, it has been, been really cool. Um, wow. Okay. So, so the book is The Father She Went to Find. It's from Poison Pen. It comes out next week when we're recording right now on April 2nd. And, and I, I, I got one last uh, question for you. And, and this is not even a formulated question. It's just, I, I'm, I'm just, what I love is that this is a thriller that doesn't, it feels like, like we're creating a new genre called the personal thriller or something like that, hmm. because it's kind of a road movie thriller. It's like Corvette summer, but with, but with guns. <laughs> Without Mark you know? Hamill. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who was the woman in Corvette summer? I got to go look that up. Uh, I, I remember. can't remember if it was Annie Potts or, but anyway. Hmm. Um, so uh, I, you, you know, when you are pitching to your editor, um, how do you pitch it? Do you go, you know, it's a personal thriller. It's a, it's a it's a domestic thriller like what how do you how do you describe what this story is yeah that's a great question and usually i don't ever pitch them ahead of time i just write what i want to write i write what what brings me joy and then i hope <laughs> you know i yeah. give it to my agent and then she creates the pitch out of it but it's really that hook that they're looking for um mm. and the hook with the father she went to find is kind of like well the father stops writing her and then she finally goes to go look for him although he's right. just kind of a MacGuffin of the whole thing um but i mean you might write a whole book and realize like oh nobody's interested in it but the idea of, of thinking of just that hook and then trying to write a book out of it you know, it's going to be totally different than by the time I, I get done with it. There are some people who obviously know, like they outlined that I know exactly what the story is about. Here's what the story is about. And I'm going to tell you about it before I write it. I can't do that. So I just, I, I go on hope <laughs> a lot. Sure. 
Well, I mean, I would have thought that you were outlining. It had a very, it, I think it coheres. I mean, it helps, I guess, that you rewrote it and, and you yeah. know, a little about You have to rewrite so that, it. all comes alive in the editing. Yes. But, uh, but you know, it's a, it, it is a page turner and I, and I really, I really enjoyed reading it. So oh, I, and you've gotten some good quotes, by the way, I've been talking to Carter Wilson, who is a fellow Coloradoan, which is awesome. And uh, uh, he has his own podcast, Making It Up. But his new book is The Father She Went to Find. It comes out April 2nd. I hope you have a fantastic release. And thank you very, very much. Thanks, Jason. It was great to be here. Yes, sir. I'll talk to you soon.